friends and thanks for joining me again. And so in the last videos of the greenhouse building series, last time we got all the way up to the insulated foundation and that's where we left off. And now it is time to get ready to build the frame. So let's talk about the frame itself. There are different styles of frames obviously to choose from and some of them have you know, some advantages over others. And so let's go through them and kind of talk about the different ones that there are to choose from and some of the advantages and disadvantages of each. So the first one would be like an A-frame. An A-frame kind of looks like an A, and because it is a very simple design, uh, this is very inexpensive to build. The problem is you lose a lot of space because you don't have walls and a roof. So you really don't have a lot of headroom unless you make it very, very tall, and then it's not as efficient because all of the heat goes way up into that top peak. So um, this is a good choice, but definitely it's a better choice if someone wanted just sort of a smaller greenhouse and they wanted like a walkway in the center, you know, or maybe even in a U shape if you have just one door on the side, and then just like growing beds on either side and then maybe in the back. So again, it's a good choice. It's very inexpensive, um, but do keep in mind that it is going to be a little bit tight feeling uh, when it comes to the headroom and whatnot. The next one would be a gable roof style. So this is a very simple and common design. The problem is when you have just a regular gable roof, you either have to uh, have glazing on both sides of the roof, or you have one side with the glazing, which is the clear material that makes a greenhouse a greenhouse, and then the other side gets like shingles or some other type of roofing material. When you have it uh, as both being the glazing, the greenhouse itself is less efficient it's going to lose a whole lot more of the heat rather than holding it in. The problem is though, if you put, you know, uh, so, like roofing on the one side, uh, it ends up with shading in the summer. So it's kind of a difficult, you know, uh, decision there to try to figure out what the right thing to do is. Um, it, and you kind of have to pick which of the two seasons you want to, you know, um, accommodate for. So if you wanted a summer greenhouse, you know, you'd probably want the entire roof to be a clear glazing material. And if you wanted it to just be mainly over the winter seasons, you know, and then grow outdoors, you know, for the rest of the seasons, if you wanted it a spring, winter, um, fall kind of greenhouse, then you could just get by with insulating one side of the roof and then glazing on the other side. The next one would be a salt box style, which is very similar to the gable roof, except that it is off-centered. So you have one long pitch and then one shorter on the other side. Um, this makes it to where the shorter pitch on the one side can be insulated, and yet you still get a huge amount of glazing on the other side. So it kind of fixes the problems that the gable roof design had, uh, which is definitely helpful. <laughs> the problem is, because the angles are different, um, it can be a little bit more difficult and more expensive to build. The next one would be an ambrel, or which it can also kind of be a barn style. So you have your walls, and then you have the, the roof, but instead of, you know, a re regular gable style roof, it actually kind of bumps it out a little bit. And the point of why people would choose this design is because it doesn't have to be as tall, and you don't compromise the headspace because of that little bump out. The next one is my favorite design, and it is the shed roof, which basically means the entire roof is one piece, and it's, you know, all one angle. So there's a tall wall on one side, a shorter wall on the other, and then just one pitch all the way down. This can also be called a lean-to, especially if it's attached to something else. And so this is the design that we chose because we have it attached to our house, and so it needed to have that one pitch so that all the water and everything would run away. This is a very good design. It's very easy to build. You know, most carpenters can build something very similar, for, you know, very easily and not expensive. Um, so it's a very common design. It's efficient and it's a good year-round choice. So that's why we chose it. And this can be one that is um, a detached or it can be a, sh a greenhouse that we have as an attached greenhouse. So it works good for both designs. The next ones are lesser known. If there's the arch greenhouse, which kind of um, starts high on one wall and then comes down, and then um, instead of it just being a straight, it kind of curves. So this is somewhat of a Chinese style. It's pretty efficient, but the problem is it can be a difficult thing to build because of that curve. So most of the time you have to order some kind of special, you know, like metal, uh, or different people have done it in like PVC. And so these aren't necessarily all that common. 
um, just because they are a little bit more difficult to build and so you have to get creative with the materials that you use and if you wanted it to be something that was year-round you know you obviously can't use PVC or something like that so it does um, it is a little bit more expensive to build and then you have to get a little bit more creative with the glazing because you need something that can follow that curve and then there's the dome, dome type of greenhouse I'm not going to uh, be able to answer any questions on that one or say how it is because I have done nothing with or around. I've never worked inside one. I've never been inside one. Um, I've only seen them from a distance and really don't know anything more about them. And so I'm not going to pretend like I know some things that I don't. So I'll just throw that out there that that is one of the designs that people choose. However, I can't really weigh on whether or not it's a good design or whatnot. So let's talk about the angles really quick, since the angles are a pretty hot button issue when it comes to greenhouses. A lot of the time they have an angled roof and a lot of people um, say that the ideal angle will get the most direct light in the winter as well as being able to shed the most you know, snow when you get up into the more northern areas. Um, but it also creates a steep pitch which can help make the light less direct in the summertime and can help you know from the getting the greenhouse overheated so the magic number that people come up with uh, for the right angle not right angle but the correct angle to make your um, greenhouse would be to take your latitude whatever uh, latitude you live at and then add 20. so just a quick example i live here in northern colorado and let's just say my you know latitude is around 40 that which is accurate um, so the ideal angle for the greenhouse that I was going to build here would be 60 degrees, but that is a pretty steep like number. Um, so the problem I had with that is not only would it make it to where there was a really, really, really tall roof, um, or it had to be really, really short on the knee wall in order for that to work. So I did some research to find out how much this angle really even matters, and I found out some interesting information. So. When we're talking about polycarbonate specifically, which is the, you know, the material I chose to build it with, I found out that for every 22 degrees off of this ideal angle, the reduction in light transmission is only 1%. And then after 44 degrees, or 2% light reduction, it does get a little bit more steep after that. It becomes more like 3 or 4% light reduction. So by choosing a roof that is less angled, we don't actually lose that much light transmission for polycarbonate. So when we chose to go with a 25% roof pitch, which is what we did so that we would get a nice tall um, wall on one side and then it wouldn't go too tall on the other side so that it wouldn't end up being so you know tall that it was difficult to heat and that sort of thing, um, we really didn't lose that much light transmission, hardly at all. So it was about 35 degrees off from what you know the ideal amount was and so it's probably right around one and a half percent light transmission that it's being reduced by and honestly because it's going to be more efficient not having it be so tall it makes sense to me that we went ahead and went with that less steep angle so I knew this was something that a lot of people were going to ask about when we were talking about this greenhouse series um, but I would just say try and build something that's practical for your situation the area where you have if it's a lean-to type greenhouse and you're attaching it to your house yay um, try not to make it too, too terribly steep because honestly, again, if you're using polycarbonate, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, the different materials for glazing, um, it's not going to make that big of a difference. Okay, so once you pretty much have the design and the angles picked out for what is practical for you where you live, I would highly recommend having an experienced builder build it. Basically, if you're building it with wood, which is the what the vast majority of people will go with when they're building it, you're gonna want um, to just build it in a normal stick frame fashion. I will go ahead and show you some of you know the framing on my greenhouse really quickly, but I would highly recommend having somebody who knows what they're doing build it. Okay, so here is just a quick example of what the framing on our greenhouse looks like. We use two by sixes because we do get a fair amount of snow and wind here. These are spaced 48 inches apart. We have two of them here. And then very similar on the roof, um, I think, the ones that go across here are two by eight, and then the purling is two by six. Um, again, that was for engineering for the snow and the wind. Uh, as you can see, we did put in all of those brackets, those hurricane ties or whatever they're called, uh, up against that, what is that called, ledger board maybe? <laughs> yeah, I didn't build it. We had somebody build it. Uh, the door, obviously, as you can see, and then the windows over on the other side. 
And one of the tasks that I have to do soon here is insulate. So everywhere where there isn't um, glazing or windows, we are going to insulate in several different ways. So any of the small gaps and cracks, we are going to use some expanding foam. Maybe you know it as great stuff. Uh, even around the uh, foam board that we're going to be adding. So we are going to cut out into this R-Max insulation foam board and then stick it inside of these. And then again, around the outside edges, we're going to go ahead and put in that expanding foam, that great stuff, um, just to really block any gaps and cracks. And same with the windows. We're going to insulate all of these gaps and cracks as well. When it comes to the insulation, we obviously have several choices. Because it is a high moisture area here in the greenhouse, uh, traditional insulations may not work as well. So blow-in insulation isn't maybe the most ideal choice. It works really well, but it can be very expensive. Um, and it's not really all that great in the high moisture areas. Um, fiberglass is definitely not a good choice at all. That foam insulation that you kind of spray in, the spray foam insulation, uh, but that's very expensive and we really didn't have a ton to do. So we're just gonna use foam board instead cut it to the size that we need, and then just use a little bit of Great Stuff expanding foam around the outside edges. And honestly, I think that this is the best choice because it's going to insulate very well. Um, it, the R-Max has a very high insulating value for how thick it is. It's the same insulation we used below grade on the foundation here. And so we can just use that same insulation again, put it in the walls, um, and get that great high, you know, R value out of it, and it's really not all that expensive. So it's really, in my opinion, probably the best choice. The framing and how to insulate the walls, which is part of the way that we make this a four season greenhouse where we don't have to heat it. So hopefully that was helpful to you. I was hoping to cover the glazing material, but I'm going to have to break that into a separate video because otherwise this video would be like 30 minutes long. So yeah, stay tuned to next Friday for the next installment in the Greenhouse Building Series. Thanks for joining me. I'm Frugal Green Girl, and we'll see you next time.